Question 5.2, simplify the following expression to a single trig function. So for cos minus x times cos 90 plus x, deal with the numerator first for now. Well, cos minus x, if we just take a look at our cost diagram again, remember we measure positive angles this way, so we measure negative angles this way. So that's just minus a negative angle. So there's just going to be cos x. Cos 90 plus x, that is going to be a co-function. That's actually one of our exceptions. So that's going to be negative sine x. That is just going to be, well, a positive cos x. So if we were to rewrite the whole thing, let's just go negative 4 sine x cos x. Okay. Always list sine first. Just looks better. It helps you to understand and to spot some of the double angle formulae, if they do exist, or compound angles. Here we definitely have a compound angle. Uh, it matches exactly what we've got in the formula sheet. See, sine 30 minus x times cos x plus cos 30 minus x sine x. So there's your 30 minus x's, your cos x's, sine x sorted. So this is definitely going to be a, a compound angle and it's going to look something like this. So sine 30 minus x plus whatever the other angle was. The other angle was x. So the x's are going to cancel each other out. Okay, and we're just going to be left with sine 30 eventually. And sine 30, as we know, is actually equal to a half. So if this is equal to a half, anything divided by a half is times 2. So negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 sine x cos x. And remember, this does look like some kind of double angle expansion. You know, the whole 2 sine x cos x expansion. So how do we get a 2 in there? Well, let's just factorize. Let's take out a negative 4 to manipulate it to get the 2 in because negative 4 times 2 is equal to negative 8. Nice little trick that we can keep in the back pocket. And that's how we get the 2 sine x cos x. So that's the expansion. If we were to contract it, don't forget the negative 4. It just becomes sine 2x contracted. Boom. And that's the question.